everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. It's just me today, folks. The sweet tea is still resting, getting ready for maternity leave. I do have her think that she's going to come back for a few days before she takes off. So uh, keep her in your prayers. And we're picking up with day three of our journey through Holy Week devotional in the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you, if you guys want to follow along. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then I'm also going to read the Devo. The scripture is John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, and they say this. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, That perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold, and the money should have been given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. The devotional says this, a king is anointed. Days before Jesus's death, Mary, Lazarus's sister, anointed Jesus's head with an expensive jar of perfume. And she didn't hesitate. She kept pouring until the entire bottle was empty. While her act shocked onlookers, here's three reasons it was significant. Number one, Mary's act revealed Jesus's purpose. Throughout scripture, when God chose a king, that person was publicly anointed with oil to show that they were set apart by God. Anointing was so important that the prophesied Savior of the Jewish people was referred to as the Messiah in Hebrew or the Christ in Greek, term meaning anointed one. By anointing Jesus' head days before he died and rose again, Mary was preparing him for his burial and proclaiming that he was set apart by God to rescue the world. Number two, Mary's act showed her devotion to Jesus and her submission to his authority. Imagine standing before Jesus and giving him your salary for the entire year. When you do that, you're not just handing him your money. You're giving him your future, your dreams, and your security. This is what Mary did when she poured her bottle of perfume on Jesus. Pouring it out would have cost her financially, jeopardized her reputation, and impacted her financial security. But nothing else mattered to Mary except Jesus. She had seen his glory, and it compelled her to bow at his feet and give him everything that she had. Number three, Mary's radical devotion to Jesus mirrored Jesus' radical devotion to his father. Because God loved us, Jesus gave up everything to rescue us. And just like Mary's expensive perfume was poured out on him, Jesus' blood was given up for us. This is something Jesus did without hesitation or regret. He willingly gave up his own life so that we could be anointed by the anointed one. As you prepare for Resurrection Sunday, spend some time thinking about the love Jesus has shown you. Jesus doesn't want anything to hold you back from coming to him, so allow him to reveal anything you need to surrender. Then consider what it would mean for you to follow Jesus the way Mary did. And let me just come out the gates and say, the way that Mary loved Jesus, wow. Like, this is a weird way to describe it, but chef's kiss. This is incredible. I feel so convicted to want to bow down before the Lord and Savior and not just kind of treat him as like an accessory or a part of my life, but rather treat him like Lord and Savior. Um, Watching the way she, you know, Martha's over there making dinner and Mary's sitting at Jesus' feet. You know what I mean? And then like, you know, people are just having dinner, all this stuff. And she's like, Jesus, I just have to anoint you with the most expensive thing I have. I have to give you my best. And I think about the times where I typically give God my crumbs of my time, of my energy, my focus, of my devotion. And I want to give him the first fruits, the best fruits. Um, I want to, I want to do right by him. Sometimes life does get in a way, and I think I need to check on that. I don't know where you're at with your journey and walk with God. 
but it's so easy just to kind of let interruptions keep us from spending time with him. I'm not hating on interruptions. What I'm what I'm pointing out is those we can't continue to skip our appointments with him. And if you're not if you're not having appointments with him, then we we need to start making those in the first place. I was actually just downstairs talking with Carly and Tori about some stuff that they were working on and we were just talking about how it seems like imagine you're sitting in a boat, right? And you're out in the water in the boat and then you see you notice a little leak and you're like, "Uh oh, okay, this is not good. I need to plug that up." So you put your finger in it, right? And then kind of next to it, another hole opens up. So you put another finger in it. And then on the other side of the boat, you see another leak pop through and you plug that one, you get it covered up. But at that time, you see one right in the floorboard of the boat. So you put your foot over it to stop that leak. And sometimes life can feel that way. It can feel like every time you think you have one thing solved, another thing happens. And I don't know why that happens. I do know that God says, Count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds. And because of what it produces within us, which is endurance and perseverance, which is which is things we need as we run our race here on earth, we need that endurance. We need that perseverance when it comes to uh, navigating a broken world. But we can't let those things keep us from spending time with him and acknowledging what he has done. I guarantee every single one of you listening are people that that love God and love to spend time with him. But why do we fail to do so sometimes? We get busy. Life happens. Interruptions happen. Oh, I got to work. Oh, and like, hey, I'm with you. I'm, I'm speaking to myself right now. But it does make me wonder how I can emulate that beautiful submission and beautiful intentional devotion that Mary had to Jesus? How can I emulate that? How can I pursue that? What does that look like for me? And I think I'm going to take some time after this Devo and praying like, God, what does that look like for me? What in my life is holding me back from experiencing more of you? Is it a year's wages? Is it my phone? Is it a hobby that I take way too seriously? Formula one? Is it what is it? You know, is is there something holding me back from fully experiencing you and devoting everything to you? What is that, God? Yeah. And honestly, just praise God for this beautiful whole holy week that we have. Anyways, I'm gonna pray that now. Lord, thank you for this devotional. Thank you for being the anointed king that we all needed, Lord. Thank you that you anointed us with your blood. Thank you that you covered us with it. Thank you that you protected us with it. You sacrificed yourself so that we would have eternal life, Lord. Help us to not make little of that. Lord, I just pray that you'll speak to our hearts right now. And if there's anything in our life, in, in our lives individually, that is keeping us from pure devotion to you and um, an increased passion to follow you, God, I pray that you would bring that to our mind and and help us to navigate what that looks like offering that to you guys so that way we don't we don't have anything else sitting on the throne of our heart but you lord lord thank you for the ways that you care for us thank you for all the blessings you've given us lord thank you for the blessings to come lord but help us to not worship the blessings help us worship the blesser lord help us to worship you help us to be so content in you that the things that you give us is just the cherry on the top, Lord. It's just a sweet, oh, wow, praise God that that happened. But honestly, God, praise God, you know. We're not just excited about the 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 gifts. We're, we're excited about the gift giver, Lord. In your son's name we pray, amen. Well, amen, y'all. Now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece, and don't forget that we love you. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.